Welcome back, I'm Brian and this is Duck River Homestead. Today we are installing a whole house, or should I say a whole homestead, water filtration system. It's important to us to have clean drinking water. Uh, there's often a lot of chemicals, pesticides sometimes, other bad things, chlorine, etc. in our drinking water. And we simply don't want this stuff in our water. It can also cause damage to appliances, toilets, etc. Leave rust stains. So what we did was we bought a whole house water filtration system. These filters are good for up to 100,000 gallons. We'll probably be using our utility bills to track the usage to make sure that we are changing the filters on time. Granted, there's probably a 10% margin of error on those so 90 to 110,000 gallons should be fine probably about once a year so. we started this project a while ago uh, we built the utility shed in order to run our utilities to it right we were going to run our water to it we we're going to run our electricity to it uh, internet potentially have uh, gas at some point, propane. And in the future, what we'll be doing is adding a battery backup solar system and probably like a uh, potentially either diesel powered or natural gas or propane powered. And that will allow us to have automatic failover backups for if the grid goes down. Now, if we do have solar power, the grid would then sort of be the backup for that. And that would require some changing of our electronics, but we, we can worry about that a little bit later. As of right now, for this video, we are focusing purely on the water filtration system. So we have two taps to the property. One is for our agricultural side of the property. Uh, this one will be tax exempt. The other side is for residential use. And that would be for our utility shed, for washing cars, for our homes. Right now I'm in the mobile home. You can see we have power, we have water. It's awesome. We're getting our HVAC installed in a couple days. Once we're moved in, we're gonna start building our new house. That's gonna need water as well. So, what we did was we ran water to the utilities shed. The utilities shed is going to provide water, electric, etc., for the rest of the property. I didn't want to build two filtration systems, one for the mobile home, one for the house. So, <clears throat> so what we decided to do was put the filtration system in the utilities shed. This is sort of a central utilities power building, right? And in order to have centrally managed utilities, why not put the filtration system in the central utilities management building, right? The water system has about 115 PSI at the street, which is way too much for a house. We want at most about 80 PSI at a house, probably more around 60. The filtration system doesn't even handle any, anything more than uh, 80 PSI, or 85 PSI actually. Uh, it actually says limited to 85 PSI from I think 15 PSI to 85 PSI, could be wrong on that. And it's important not to have 115 PSI at the filtration system because it will end up causing lots of problems. So we've installed a pressure reducer at the filtration system. A couple things we're doing here is we are adding a bypass. The bypass is really important. If you need to do any sort of maintenance on the water filtration system, 
and we will, and we will at least yearly. We're gonna need to change filters out. We're gonna need to do all those type of things. So it's important that we have a bypass on the water filtration. We have multiple cutoffs, about seven cutoffs that we're installing here. And we have about seven shutoffs that we're installing on the whole system. One for the water main in. We have shutoffs for the filtration. We have a shutoff for the bypass. We have shutoffs for each of the outlets that are going out of the out of the shed. Now, like I said, we have the water going to the mobile home. We have an outlet for the actual house itself. That's just hanging out right now, underground, waiting to be dug up and reused at some point when we start building the house. We're gonna have a lot of trenching to do to go to the actual house as well including uh, electricity and water and internet. Now we don't expect the shed to get cold or freeze, but there is always that possibility. We've installed insulation in the, in the walls and we also plan on installing a mini split system. The mini split system will allow us to have cold air, warm air, etc., and maintain a good temperature in the utility shed. Do we need this? Probably not, but we want to also be able to store some food in here temporarily as we uh, build up some supply. We are a go. It's coming at you. I don't see any leaks yet. I'm gonna run it through the bypass first. Alright, just let me know if I need to Looks like you can come on down if you want. It's not a huge shed, it's only 10 by 12, so it's not gonna fit a lot of stuff. We also don't wanna use this as a storage shed. So we're installing insulation. We're installing plywood on the walls so that we can strap things down to it. On the end walls, we're gonna be doing drywall. So we'll be seeing this all as we uh, continue to build out the utility shed to what we need it to be. So like I said, we don't really expect it to get to freezing point, but if it does, that should be okay. And the reason is we have added insulation to the pipes. This is very important as we don't want the water to freeze. Uh, the water is underground, it should be fine. Uh, but once it comes in, up into the shed, that's where it's gonna be hitting cold air. Now, as long as we're moving the water regularly, that shouldn't be a problem, especially with the insulation. So there's three filter types that we're installing. The first one is a sediment filter. This will pick up dust particles, really small, fine items. The second filter is a CTO filter, chlorine, taste, and odor. So it filters out the chlorine, the taste, it helps balance things out, and odor. So if there's bad odors in the water, it helps clear that out. The third filter is a heavy metals filter. This filters out things like iron and manganese. Iron specifically can cause lots of issues and the reason for this is because of rust. If you've ever looked in your toilet, in your sinks, in your showers or baths and you see sort of a pinkish, uh, reddish, orangish line, that's rust and you get iron, iron scales, etc., that are bad for your health at the end of the day, will end up causing lots of issues with your appliances. So these are the three filters that are in the, in the filtration system. What's cool is you can cater this, these systems to whatever 
your house needs. So we now have running water. I'm extremely excited that we have water running to the mobile home and it's ready to run to the house as we build it as well. It tastes great and we took a water sample test to see what does it look like. I'd like to take a sample of it, of the water that's unfiltered to see what that looks like. The water that came out of the tap originally smells heavily of chlorine and the filtered water doesn't smell at all. It's, it's actually tastes really good. If you want to watch a little bit more on our journey to getting water to the mobile home and the utility shed, check out this video over here. It shows us trenching a very long distance. And please check out the playlist of us building out the utility shed. From digging the footers to pouring the concrete to milling the wood that built the shed. It's pretty cool. Thanks for watching.